Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to bake inside Substance Painter. So here we have a low polygon mesh and if we open up ZBrush you can see this high polygon mesh that I made. Now the colors are different because I want those for the color ID. So there's red for dough and blue for the chocolate chip cookies. But basically there you go. What you do is you go to the texture set settings. Now my UI is going to be different than yours is probably. Uh, so go ahead and just find that wherever it might be. Uh, under texture set settings, go to bake textures, and then you have all these options. You have normal and ambient. You can turn them off, turn them on, whatever you need, and you can then change the size. I like to do 512 by 512 my first bake just to kind of look at it. Also, it's good for the tutorial for speed's sake because it can get a little slow. I'm going to go ahead and add a high polygon uh, mesh right there. It's just a .obj, and we're good there. And that's pretty much it. Now, the max frontal distance, I do like to change that typically to be a little bit higher, but we're going to leave it low so that you can kind of see the mistakes. And you'll also be able to see a little bit uh, how fast you can see these mistakes. Already, you can see that that chocolate chip is doing something really weird. So I could abort it. And then you can kind of iterate that way. Let's go ahead and close that. And you can see, yeah, it didn't bake very well. So it has all the maps, but the bake was broken. So go ahead and go back to bake textures and change that max frontal distance. I'm just going to say 0.5 and we're going to see how this bakes now. Okay. And immediately you can see that it fixed it. Now it's still baking and it's taking a little bit of time, but we don't need to abort because it works. So there you go. We have all the maps imported into, into poly into substance painter and it's really fast. You can increase the resolution if you want to, but this saves so much time instead of baking it somewhere else and trying to import it. Um, let's go ahead and just show you some of those ID maps too. Let's make a chocolate layer. You left click and then you do add mask by ID mask, pick a color, and you can see it has that baked in already and you don't have to finagle with any of the maps. It's super useful, super powerful. Uh, we have curvature, we have if we want to go ahead and add a smart material, it's going to work right out the box. So I want to try and find one that uh, kind of illustrates this. So let's try this one. Um, and it's loading there. And you can see that one was probably not a very good one. You can see that the world space is being used, but it's not really showing the curvature. But basically everything is baked into, into this and you're good to go. You don't have to export and save or do anything like that. Let's go ahead and open up a new file here. So this was a single object. What happens if you have an object that looks like, let me find this cookies group. That looks like this, where you have several cookies, uh, some paper, you can't really see it. Here, let me show that. Uh, there's some paper for the tray and then there's this metal tray. How are we gonna bake this out without you know, exploding the mesh as it were? So my high polygon mesh, let me go ahead and load that up and show you what that looks like. And again, I have it color coordinated, so you see the different things and it looks really ugly. But but I'm not gonna blow it up. I'm gonna bake it all just as is. And so that's a really cool feature that Substance Painter lets you do. So let's go ahead and try and just bake it like normal without doing anything different. I'm gonna load the different things. So I have cookies high, cookies underscore high, pan underscore high, uh, paper underscore high right there. And I didn't get the cookies, where's that at? There's a cookies underscore high. So now it's going to take all those and basically bake them as if they're one thing. I'm going to do 256. So it's a little bit faster. And you can see it's baking and it's actually doing a pretty good job. It's taking that and it's just kind of doing the nearest neighbor. Let's turn that off so we can look. Now you can see the cookies turned out really good, but the paper right there, it doesn't know if it should look at the cookies, if it should look at the paper, if it should look at the pan. Underneath the pan, you can see that the cookies actually bled through. So how are we going to bake this uh, without it kind of bleeding through and messing up the mesh and not wanting to blow this up? So what you can do is where it says match, you go match by name. So now all my low poly will look for their corresponding name with the underscore high to bake from. Now there's a little bit more finagling that we have to do in ZBrush and within whatever software package you export this. But as long as the high poly has a, has a suffix underscore high, you should be good. So here we are in ZBrush, and what you need to do when you export this is you basically need to, here, let me just go ahead and click on something. So we're on the pen. Now we're gonna go down to where it says export. You have to turn off grouping. 
what that does is it lets Substance Painter know that it's going to ignore these these uh, names and just look at the file name because ZBrush is all sorts of messed up that way. So I'm just going to go through each one of these, turn off group on the export, and now as I export these, as long as I name the file cookies underscore high or pan underscore high and it matches with the low objects, we're going to go. So here in, in Blender, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Typically, I'll just do it right here where it says cookies underscore low for the name, the object name. But Blender, you actually have to go into the vertices. So I don't know what what software you use, but I just basically change it here. So I'm going to change this to cookies underscore low. And then go to the paper, call that paper underscore low. And then go to the pan and call that pan underscore low. Very clever naming, right? And now I can export that as one OBJ and it'll actually come out uh, and Substance, Substance Painter will look for those names. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I should be good. Let's go back to Substance Painter. And now Mesh by Name is good. All of these are named correctly and we should be good. So let's go ahead and bake this and let's see what happens. Already you can kind of see where the paper's at. It's not getting those strange artifacts. And so it's looking really good. Look at those cookies underneath the pan, looks really good. There's a little artifacting going on, but that's more of the ambient occlusion than it is the normal map. So, and you also see a little bit of weirdness there. That's just because the paper doesn't line up perfectly. And that's something I could just fix uh, in Photoshop really easy. It's just some normal mapping going on weird. But besides that, it was a perfect bake. Everything looks great. Uh, didn't have to like explode the mesh, didn't have to do anything hard like that. We could just, you know, name a couple things differently and bada bing, bada boom. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this. Here's one that I've already baked. It's the same scene, but I've also textured it. And I want to show you some strange things that kind of happen when we do this. Now, the normal looks great. The ambient occlusion looks great. But up there, you can kind of see the artifacts. I didn't even try and fix that because, you know, it maybe just even looks like it's burnt paper. So I didn't even care. So if I go to the textures and look at the ID map, so the best way to kind of show this to you is to create a, a fill layer and then let's fill that with the ID map so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to create a fill layer, go to base color I, map ID, UV scale to one, and you can see it looks good. Cookies are red, chocolate chips are blue, pans purple, looking good. Underneath though, you're starting to see that kind of artifacting going on. Uh, the normal maps bake really well, but it doesn't really bake the color ID map very well in this method. You can go to ID and you can kind of change this to do um, like a mesh ID or a poly group. You're not going to get the vertex color, but frankly speaking, the vertex color is all I need, but let me show you this. So I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, mesh ID. And then I'm going to change this down to 512 instead of, you know, high resolution. I'm going to go ahead and bake this. And you're going to see what's going to happen to the colors. So if, if you are getting some errors and each thing is broken up, this is also an alternative where you don't even have to worry about the, the color ID. So right there, you can see that it fixes it really well. Uh, the pan's not bleeding through, the cookies are red, the paper's blue. But now if we want to keep those chocolate chips, you would have to do the vertex color. So understand that you can play around with that and kind of see how that works. So in review texture settings, bake textures, okay? And it'll automatically propagate this. Here, you have to make sure in ZBrush to turn off groups. So it doesn't matter the name of the subtool. As long as you turn off the groups, you're good. Export it, name it the thing you want. So cookie underscore low, and that would be the name that Substance Painter will read. If you're using uh, Blender, let me go ahead and find that. You need to make sure that it doesn't matter the object name, it's the vertex name that you have to, to look at. So I'm gonna call this, you know, pan low, paper low, cookies low. And then when you export it, you just export as a .obj all together. And that basically takes care of it. So then you go to bake, mesh, uh, mesh by name, and that's it. Thank you for your time. And if you like what we do and would like to support us, please consider following us on Facebook or Twitter. And also for our patrons at Patreon, we're going to be offering special files with all these tutorials. So at the correct tier, you'll be able to get the files that we used to create this tutorial. Thank you so much for your time again and have an awesome day.